During a recent training event with Dan Sullivan, we opened the discussion regarding the peculiar nature of electrical fault finding. Uh, it was pointed out that if you asked 100 mechanics how to change rear brake shoes, you're going to get 100 answers and all of them are going to be pretty much identical. However, if you asked 100 mechanics how to diagnose a no start fault, you'll probably only get about 60 answers and all of which will be completely different. So if you went a step further then and compared the manufacturer's diagnostic flowcharts, uh, you're again going to come up with completely different ways of diagnosing what is effectively the same fault on what is effectively the same component. So this for us repairing vehicles in the field and in the shop is a you know, very confusing state of affairs. While the skill of electrical fault finding is something that obviously can't be systematized, the application of your knowledge and experience can be. So we're going to go through today with a, a couple of pointers um, to empower your electrical fault finding ability. The most important thing to acknowledge when looking for electrical faults is that unlike mechanical repairs, the diagnosis component of electrical fault finding is longer and the repair time is shorter. Unlike mechanical fault finding, which is, uh, you know, the diagnosis component is a short amount of time and the re repair component is a larger amount of time. So just when you approach any job, keep in mind that the diagnosis is going to take you longer, but the repair is only going to be a small amount of time. Okay, so before you even get started, you need to approach the job if you're just arriving on site or it's just been towed into your shop. Uh, with an open mind. If you have a, an idea of what could be wrong with it uh, and then set about performing tests to try and prove that that component is faulty, uh, more often than not will just lead you astray. Number two, verify the fault. Is it a permanent fault? Is it intermittent? Uh, does it match with the report on the job card or the customer's description of the fault? Sometimes you kind of you need to read between the lines with what's reported, what the customer actually said uh, and the vehicle's history. It could be related to a previous repair. And number three, this is the most important one. You need to understand the circuit. Wiring is on the vehicle. Diagnosing is in your understanding of how that circuit works. You don't diagnose wiring, you diagnose a circuit. You fix wires, you test circuits. I mean, sure, you can rush up to a vehicle and start performing tests. But uh, answer me this, what's a better use of your time? Uh, spending $20 to buy a schematic or a wiring diagram or a workshop manual online, 30 minutes learning how that circuit works, 10 minutes of testing to come up with a, a rock solid diagnosis, or spending two hours making tests and coming up with a, I'm pretty sure that's what it is, diagnosis. Now, obviously everyone is going to say, well, we can't get wiring diagrams. That's not entirely true, 90% of the time. Um, you just need to know how to look for them. So the words that you use when you're performing a, a search on Google to find a document. And international variance is a, is a really powerful tool. So say, for example, you're looking at a, um, a Holden Rodeo. If you searched Holden Rodeo wiring diagram, um, you know, you'll be presented with a number of results, but all of which are going to have come from Australia. That's the only place that that vehicle exists. Um, you can expand your search by, you know, changing it from uh, wiring diagram, uh, wiring schematic, which is what you really want uh, for a Holden Rodeo, but still limiting your search to Australia. So a really good tool is Wikipedia. You just uh, type in the name and the make of the vehicle and it will present you with a list of who makes it um, and what are the name of the international variants. So, you know, as you can see here, we've got the Holden Rodeo, which is also called uh, the Chevrolet D-Max in America. So that's going to expand your search to American variants uh, and also the Isuzu D-Max, which, which is going to expand your search to Asian variants. So just by changing the wording of what you're searching for, you can change, you can go from looking from something that can only exist in Australia to effectively 
the entire world. Okay, number four. Number four. Uh, deter number four. Determine related symptoms. You need to look at electrical faults holistically. Um, you know, always keep in the back of your mind how could these faults be related. Uh, more often than not, they will be. Number five, find rights, not wrongs. Diagnosing electrical faults is a process of elimination. It's not about finding what's wrong with the circuit, it's about finding what's right. Number six, kiss ass and be lazy. My favourite. Uh, kiss ass, keep it simple, stupid, because it's always something really easy. And be lazy. Once you understand the circuit, you need to figure out where you can eliminate the most potential circuit faults with the least amount of testing at the easiest to access place. Uh, so, you know, you need to understand the vehicle and understand the circuit. Uh, you know, a good example would be to testing a starter circuit. Um, an ideal place for that would be at the relay. You get two sides of the circuit, the switching side and the switch side, and the power supply and earth side of both of those circuits. So you've got effectively two circuits with four halves that you can eliminate in one place, all with a little map on the side of the relay that tells you how it works. And uh, you know, that's easier than lying under the, you know, in the dirt on the ground testing a starter motor for, for one test that, you know, that's, that's just smart. So once you understand the circuit, just be lazy. What can you get to and what will a test there eliminate? Number seven, learn to trust your meter. Your multimeter can't lie and a circuit can't break the law. It can't break Ohm's law. So do the math on all of your readings. There's plenty of smartphone apps out there for, you know, for calculating Ohm's law. Um, if you make a measurement, you know, you've got two known quantities, system voltage and um, you know, maybe you've measured resistance. So you can calculate really easily um, current flow. You know, is that right? Is that wrong? What size fuse is supposed to be in the circuit? Uh, the, the only way that you're ever going to be able to look at something and know whether it's right or wrong is by learning it. And the best way to learn it is by repetition. So just do it, just do it, just keep doing it and you'll learn it. So you also need to keep in mind that there are only two things in a circuit that can change. That's voltage and resistance. You can either have too much or too little of either. Uh, so you, you just think about it with Ohm's law. Um, the only thing that can affect current flow is, is say for example, you're bl blowing a fuse, so you've, the current flow is too high. So the only thing that can possibly cause that is system voltage is too high or the resistance is too low. Eight, say it out loud, there's only three faults that can occur in a wire. Uh, it can either be open, shorted, or have a resistive fault. That, that's the only things that can go wrong with a wire. So when you find a fault, say it out loud. Uh, for example, you know, you PLC, the PLC isn't switching solenoid A. So the fault with that circuit is solenoid A is open. It's called a circuit for a reason. It needs to be a circle. Um, so that, that in this instance might be a symptom of the fault. So, we know by learning the circuit that it's controlled by an input from, solen uh, from position sensor D um, and when I made a test there I saw it had zero volts so that circuit is shorted. Just do, so right. And nine. Repair the fault. Repair the fault and you're done. Test it to ensure that it stays fixed, which is obviously important. Uh, but, you know, there's nothing more satisfying than systematically uh, diagnosing an electrical fault. And there's nothing more frustrating than getting it wrong. You know, uh, think about your own successes and failures in the past. Um, how good does it feel to get it right and how bad does it feel to get it wrong. So that's it for us today. Don't forget we're powered by feedback. Um, if you like this video, let us know. If you don't, let us know. Uh, but send us an email, give us a call. See you guys.